Welcome back to the Tank Me Later podcast, which is part of the Fantasy Basketball International Podcast Network. This is episode 31, and for this one, I have 12 teams, and we're going to be going through a quick dynasty mock. So I'm picking from the 11th spot, so let's go ahead and get into it. And before we get into the mock draft, mock draft, just a quick reminder that sports betting has rapidly risen in popularity, and I want to connect you all with an opportunity to get started or get ahead. Having multiple sports book accounts is the most simple way to maximize your profits, and there has never been a better time to sign up. When you visit my page, signupexpert.com slash TML, you'll be connected to all the sports books in your region, along with a review of each platform and its unique benefits. All these sports books have valuable sign-up offers for new users, and when you register through my link, you will automatically receive the top offer at each one. When you use multiple sports books, you ensure that you can always access the best available odds, which is key to successful sports betting. If you want to take advantage of these benefits and support our brand, please consider signing up for your next sports book at signupexpert.com slash TML. But we're not going to be doing any betting for this podcast. We're going to be doing the opposite, and we are going to be doing a dynasty mock draft. Um, have a number of analysts in here um, to join me and then just some committed dynasty players. So it should be a pretty accurate mock draft. Um, based on the consensus of the dynasty community, the fantasy community, um, which is basically means there's a lot of smart people in here. So the ones I didn't get confirmations. This is just me looking at people's usernames because some look familiar that I wasn't able to figure out uh, who they were. But a few in here that I did recognize I was able to figure out two guys from Sports Ethos. Mark C is picking first and D-Ball B-Ball is picking eighth. Uh, you can follow them on Twitter at Mac Attack 145 and at the Ball B Ball. Uh, Huddy243, I believe that's NBA Dynasty Prospects at Ops Watching on Twitter, and he is picking from the 10th spot right in front of me. Braxton from Angle Fantasy Basketball at Angle Fantasy BB on Twitter is picking from the 5 spot. Um, and then also, I meant, forgot to mention this one. Totally noticed it, didn't write it down in my notes. Trap Trap Dizzle is Dizzle Dynasty Sports. Uh, he's picking from the 4 slot. And then Dan Titus from Yahoo is dipping his toes into a dynasty draft um, here. And yeah, he's picking at the 12th spot. So right after me. So we have about two minutes until this mock draft starts. Um, and, you know, this is my fifth podcast episode this week. I believe I was I featured on uh, Dr. A's with Roto Wire on Tuesdays, but then this is the fourth episode I've done with Tank Me Later and the third mock draft in a row, three nights in a row doing mock drafts. So it's been a lot of fun um, to be able to do this. I'm not expecting to continually be doing episodes every single night all season, but I wanted to take advantage of the opportunity because it's prime mock draft season and need to add a little bit more to the Roto World draft guide. So I want to take the results from some of these mocks and add them to that, um, which is another great source for your fantasy hoops draft um, can use it all year long. Just the, the fantasy basketball space, I think is in a really good spot. I feel like there's a lot of people contributing. Obviously we know dynasty has been growing the past few months, um, but yeah, so a lot of smart people and quite a few are joining me for this one. And we still have a minute to go until this mock draft starts. Um, so I'll just go ahead and kind of give my quick thoughts on how this is shaping up. I am picking from the 11th spot, and honestly, I haven't done – trying to think. I may have done one 12-team dynasty draft at all, and it, I think it may have even just been a mock. So I don't really remember what that's looking like uh, for me. I did multiple 30-team startups that were slow drafts. Um, I think I did a 20-team slow draft mock that was actually the one that adam king hosted so i did that more large drafts not as many 12 team ones but this is the first dynasty draft since the damian lillard and drew holiday trades uh, that i know of um i believe i updated my rankings but now that i'm thinking about it i think i updated it on the draft guide and not in my personal sheet so i'm gonna get that pulled up uh, so if you, my dynasty rankings are in the draft guide, 
um, the Roto World Draft Guide, and I will get that uh, pulled up so I can reference it. Also, this is uh, just me for this mock draft. Um, I will be, I don't have a guest for this one, uh, but that's okay. It just means that I'm going to talk a lot. And that's what I do with most episodes anyway. I get off topic, but since it's just me, if you're listening to this, I may take breaks um, and just think about my pick. If there's awkward gaps of silence, I apologize. But if you're watching it, hopefully at least the draft board will keep you entertained enough that it won't stand out. Okay, cool. So I have my dynasty rankings pulled up next to me so that I can reference them. And we are two picks in, and it looks like we had an auto draft for the second pick, but I'm not going to uh, undo that, even though that kind of messes with the results a little bit. We'll just uh, acknowledge it because even though this is set up to be a dynasty draft, the rankings and ADPs are kind of set up for a redraft format. Um, so could be worse. But our first three picks were Jokic, Embiid, and Luka. Obviously, that's probably not super uncommon for a redraft league. But for Dynasty, I have Embiid ranked at 10. Um, obviously, he's going to be awesome this year. But some other guys are almost to his level and significantly younger and don't have a history of knee issues. So... Yeah, just got to kind of roll with the punches as far as Embiid being two, but I probably wouldn't take him before pick 10. Um, and if you do, you're kind of committing to a win-now format. Um, but as the picks are flying off, I'll kind of read through them. Um, so went Jokic one, Embiid two, Luka three, Wemby four, SGA five, Halliburton six, LaMelo Ball seven, Jason Tatum eight. In my opinion, it's pretty clear top one, then top three, then top seven, and then top eight. It's kind of sticking to form so far because Anthony Edwards just went off the board at pick nine. Um, so really, I'd have him going eight. So the Embiid pick won't throw off too much because he still would be going top 10. And Cade Cunningham just went 10, which is pretty much lines up. So I have the 11th pick, and before I started – the mock draft, I threw in a couple people in my queue uh, just to kind of look at and see kind of what it could look like with the 11th pick, obviously expecting maybe some changes to happen, but they didn't other than the Embiid pick happening kind of early. Um, but that means that Trey Young, who's 11th in my dynasty rankings, will be my pick here. So I'm going to go ahead and select him. And then Dan is on the clock for back-to-back -back picks. So I like Trey a lot. He's still super young. Obviously, I'm a Hawks fan as well. I think I probably talk about that in every single podcast I do, say that I'm not being biased. But I'm not being biased. I really do like Trey's upside. Um, he's been dominant since year two in the league. Year one was still good for a rookie, but year two is when he really became like a dominant fantasy player. Um and so I'm happy to get him there. And then the next two of my dynasty ranks are Giannis and Evan Mobley. But it looks like if, because it looks like Dan's going to let this one auto pick. Um, I might need to shoot him a message. But um, yeah, it looks like he'll be auto drafted. So he auto drafted Steph and Giannis. Um, so I will probably send him a message here in a second. But um, Giannis would have been the next best available for me. Um, but since he's gone, I'm going to go ahead and draft Evan Mobley. So he is 13th in my dynasty ranks, and I'm getting him at pick 14. So I'm pretty happy with that. Really like Trey, really like Evan Mobley. So not only are these guys I'm high on, but they're also guys that I like. Um, so happy with the start so far. And hopefully we can get everybody in here because it looks like the Embiid auto draft is now in the draft room. So should be good to go uh, if I can get Dan in here. All right, so pick after I went Mobley. It was another uh, – okay, so now we have a few picks to talk about. After Mobley, it was Donovan Mitchell, Chet Holmgren, and Jaron Jackson Jr. 
Um, no issues with any of those. Um, Donovan Mitchell may be a couple picks high for me, but let me look back. Pairing him with Cade Cunningham is a really good start. Donovan Mitchell still going to be really good for a while, and he's kind of entering into his prime. Um, and then Cade should be much better this year than he obviously was when he played 12 games last year. So it's a good combo to start. I have no issue with it. Um, and then it went Chet Holmgren, Jaron Jackson, Devin Booker, Darius Garland. So through 18 picks, um, my top 18 in my dynasty ranks are off the board. So we're off to a good start so far. Based on mine, the next pick would be Anthony Davis. So we'll see if that happens. Um, but nothing has been too outrageous there. I think Darius Garland is pretty good value. I have him ranked at 16th, and I think he went um, 19. Excuse me, hold on. 12, 13, 14. He went 19. So actually, through my top. What the? I think I'm just doing all my math wrong. I have to be. Oh, because I got Evan Mobley at 14. I just can't count. That's my issue. Okay, so I went Mobley at 14. Mitchell was 15. And then that would mean Darius Garland was still not. Okay, I'm not going to even try and question myself because I'm messing up math here, and I don't want to keep talking about it. So after uh, Devin Booker, Darius Garland, Demonis Sabonis, Scoot Henderson, Paolo Bancaro. Um, let's see. Sabonis is a little early for me because I have pick or I have him ranked at 26th. Um, so that's a tad early for me, but pairing him with SGA, I mean, that's a team that's going to be really freaking good this year and should continue to be good for at least the next few years. So I have no problem with that. Oh, you know what? I figured out why all of my math is wrong. All of it. Steph Curry at 12. Totally threw me off. But yeah, auto draft. Cool. Okay. I'm not bad at math. I just was looking at everything wrong. So we are good. Everything makes sense. I was questioning how every bit of math was possibly working with this. But um, so it went Darius Garland at 19. So that was good value. Three spots of value. Cool. Okay. It all makes sense to me now. I'm back. I'm good. Uh, Sabonis 20. Then it went Scoot, Paolo Banquero, Kevin Durant, Cat uh, to finish out round two. So yeah, I mean, Jokic at one, Cat at 24. That's a, a heck of a big man duo to start out a franchise with. Um, and then adding Damian Lillard there. Wow. That's going to be not necessarily just a full, I mean, it's a win now team, but also it's not an old win now team, which I don't know, pretty awesome to see and like a good combo to start seeing that uh cat is going at 24 or went at 24 in this one, um, which is actually a couple spots of value for me, but that's because uh Sabonis went early. And then obviously also Steph, went at 12 and I have him ranked at 33, but um, with, I mean, his age, um, that's why it's still gonna be a really good team this year. So Anthony Davis just went second pick of the third round and I had him 19th in my dynasty rankings. So pretty solid value there. Um, even though it was an auto draft. But the auto draft has Joel Embiid, Kevin Durant, and Anthony Davis. So KD is ridiculous. That's eh, not ridiculously high to me, actually. I have Steph at 33, Dame at 34, and Kevin Durant at 35, though I might bump up. Maybe I didn't update um, my dynasty rankings after the Dame trade. Or maybe I just didn't. In, okay, I didn't bump Dame up at all. That's what my issue was. I would probably bump up Damian Lillard a tad. Um. So no problem taking him th uh, first pick of the third round. After Anthony Davis went Zion Williamson and Bam Adebayo. So looking at how some of these teams are shaping out through three picks, we have a, a Luca, Paolo Bancaro, Zion Williamson, like first three. 
which I think is awesome because I don't, I don't know Ben Caro's free throw percentage off the top of my head, but I feel like it's slightly below average. Um, then obviously Zion struggles and Luca has his struggles from the free throw line as well. So Ben Caro shot 73.8% uh, as a rookie from the free throw line. Um, so slightly below average. And then um, Luca was also just like a high volume guy that for some reason has no issue hitting step backs, but struggles from the free throw line. And then Zion, if he can get like, I don't know, like figure out his health and is able to be healthy, like steal the draft. It's going to happen in every redraft or dynasty, wherever Zion goes, if he's healthy, it's going to be a steal because his value is, is like never been lower than what it is kind of right now. Um, so let's see, I'm about to be back on the clock. Um, one pick before me after it went Zion, went bam, Mikhail Bridges, Walker Kessler, De'Aaron Fox, Scotty Barnes, Desmond Bain. Um, it looks like my best available right now is Larry Markkinen. So if he's available, I'm just going to stick to my rankings for this um, as best as I can. Just really test to see how it looks. Even if, not that it would be a bad pick. I, I do, I'm looking at it. I like Markin in here, assuming that, well, this might end up being an auto draft, which would be James Harden, I believe. So cool. So that was an auto pick. Not too worried about that or what that looks like, but Harden probably went a little earlier than I would have him being taken at, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lock in Lori Markinen. Um, I like him a lot this year and also in Dynasty. Um, probably more so this year than in Dynasty, but um, I still really do like his upside. I think he's a legit player. He didn't just benefit from an opportunity. I think he is a legit player, and I think he's going to be able to keep that up. Uh, Dan is in the draft room now and went Kyrie and Fred Van Vliet. I know he's super high on Kyrie this year, um, so like to see him get his guys. I'm going to go ahead and get Jalen Williams with this pick, who is ranked just behind um, Laurie Markinen in my rankings. So I have Markinen at 25, Jalen Williams at 27. So very happy to get them at 35 and 38. Um, so I have a pretty young team so far. So I have Trey Young, Evan Mobley, Laurie Markinen, and Jalen Williams. Um, so kind of a good mix of guys. Now that I'm looking at it, it's not, I, if most, I don't know if most people or if many people look at going into a dynasty draft as, okay, what, what kind of build am I going to have? What kind of punch strategy am I going to take? And I think to an extent you can do that, but it's not the strategy that I'm generally going to take. I'm looking to just maximize value because in my opinion, trades are much, much easier to make in dynasty formats than in redraft because either like you have that element of team direction that you can use to help you make trades. So if you're clearly tanking or somebody else is clearly tanking, generally you can factor in draft picks to help you be able to facilitate a trade. Um, but also if somebody does try and commit to a punt build, I have like, you can get, guys that help that um, and then also either get picks in return different things like that so happy with trey happy with mobley um trey is spot on for value for me and then mobley is i think two picks of value for me one pick of value for me so that's fine and then mark and Jalen williams were a lot of value based on my rankings um so what j dub is going to get me steals efficiency not super high scoring uh, Markinen is going to be more of scoring, rebounding threes. Um, not much defensively, not much, not many assists. Mobley is going to, he doesn't, he's not a high volume free throw shooter at this point of his career. Could he become one? Maybe, but a below average free throw shooter, um, not going to give you many threes, but all the upside in the world, um, super high on Mobley, probably higher on him than maybe other people are. I think his redraft value is a little bit lower for me this year because Jared Allen's still there, but at some point Jared Allen's going to get moved. Like he, it's just going to happen. Um, it may not be this year. It may be two years down the road. When that happens is when Evan Mobley gets unleashed. Maybe if Cleveland starts off the season slow, 
Donovan Mitchell has kind of said, eh, like, I'm not going to, you know, sign an extension here. I'm going to just kind of wait it out. Speculation that he could leave, but not saying he's not committed for this year, but there are question marks about what his future looks like in Cleveland or if it's in Cleveland at all. So if they say, okay, we've gotten off to a bit of a rough start, but we really believe that we can turn this around. Let's trade Jared Allen. Try and I don't know exactly what that trade package would look like, but try and get a better team that fits around elevating Mobley Garland and Donovan Mitchell. That's the best case scenario for Evan Mobley this year. I just don't really see that happening. Um, so that's probably one I'm going to have to wait on, but still should be a pretty competitive team this year with this first four. Um, but I think I'm really going to reach my peak in a year or two when Mobley really hits his stride. Cause I feel like the other guys are kind of like Jalen Williams, not that he doesn't have upside, but I feel like he's already like contributing at a high level, even as a rookie. Trey young is, you know, at not at his peak, but playing at in his prime within his prime and Mark is the best basketball he's played in his career. Uh, hopefully he can get better, but I don't know how much better. So win now, but still young. I like it. So after just to recap now, cause Round four is kind of finished up. If you're watching on screen, you're able to see it. But if you're just listening, um, after I went Jalen Williams, it went Miles Turner, Jordan Poole, Dejounte Murray, Alperin Shengun, DeAndre Ayton, Jimmy Butler, Jamal Murray, Josh Giddy, John Morant, Chris Stapps Porzingis to wrap up round four, and Jalen Brunson first pick of round five. So that has um, DeAndre Ayton going at 43. So I believe I updated his ranking after the trade um and i had him at up to 56 and that was before they traded for um before they traded for rob williams which i think you know long term maybe not as much of an issue because you don't know how players situations are going to change from year to year even by the next trade deadline so i'm just a little bit lower on ayton's talent though i do like his situation in portland more uh, significantly more than I did in Phoenix. Um, two picks since Jalen Brunson, Kawhi Leonard, and Nick Claxton. Um, let me look at my rankings and see if there's any good bit of value. So through four rounds, I'm just going to name off a couple. Maybe it's just one guy. I think, okay, so three guys in my top 48 that haven't gone yet that I probably would have taken already at this point. Um, is Franz Wagner, Amen Thompson, and OG Ananobi. So if any, okay, so Franz Wagner just went. So if Amen Thompson or OG Ananobi makes it back around to me, I'll probably be taking them with the next pick. Uh, Amen has more upside, I think, than Asar Thompson. But I think for redraft, Asar has a chance of starting. I think, honestly, I'd start him if I were Detroit, but we'll see what Monty Williams chooses to do. I think there's a good chance that he does start. Chance that he doesn't, good chance that he does. Um, Amen is going to be Fred Van Vliet's backup. Van Vliet is too good. He's probably the best player in Houston right now. Um, well, I mean, that's probably not going to last very long, but as of right now, he is. Um, so since Fran Wagner got picked, it went Pascal Siakam, Tyrese Maxey, Amen Thompson, Jalen Brown, Paul George, uh, which has me taking OG Ananobi if um, he isn't picked right here. And if he, is, okay, so Asar Thompson just wins. So I'm going to go and select OG Ananobi, um, which means I kind of have steals locked down for like the next d- decade, at least the next five years between OG and Jalen Williams. So I'm going to go ahead and add him. Um, I think he's going to have an expanded role in Toronto. What that does for his game, we'll see. I mean, he's not an on ball superstar by any means. But I think just having an expanded opportunity is going to be good for him, even if he loses it out on a tad bit of efficiency. And that is uh, with Fred Van Vliet gone. And then freaking Dan just took Devin Vassell. Dang it. Um, okay, so Dan went Devin Vassell and Nyeka Kongu. Is, oh gosh. Just taking my guys, man. Just taking my guys. That hurts. Uh, let's see. Okay, so my best available, I believe, is Brandon Ingram. 
I know I said I was going to stick to my rankings as much as possible. The next best would be, I guess, Zach Levine. Yeah, I'm just going to stick to my rankings. Go Brandon Ingram. Um, so I don't – Brandon Ingram such a question mark for me. Really good talent. Um, but New Orleans – not. it's not New Orleans' fault, but New Orleans has a lot of guys with repeated injuries and – I just can't seem to stay on the court. So I don't love that, but I think it, as long as it's not something that plagues his entire career and maybe he can start to figure it out, um, then I, I have no problem making that pick there. Um, but man, we just got to hope that New Orleans can stay healthy because it just hasn't really been able to happen uh, so far for both him and Zion. So no problem with it though, but man, Devin really – or excuse me, Dan took Devin uh, Vassell from me and Onyeko Kongwu, two guys that I really, really like. So apparently drafting next to, next to Dan isn't going to be as great as it was the first two rounds when he auto-picked Steph Curry. So that kind of sucks. But uh, after I took Brandon Ingram, it went Tyler Hero and Mark Williams and then Jared Allen right there. Mark Williams going at, um, that is pick 64. And I have him at 63. So... No issue with it, but he's kind of the – well, I guess he's the second one of that range of bigs that's kind of going in the mid-70s to 80s, sometimes even later this year. Um, Okongwu went, Mark Williams went, and now Jalen Duran just went. So they're all starting to go. We'll see if anybody wants to keep it up and goes with the, a Dan Gafford or Zach Collins here soon. Um, but uh, that's probably slightly less likely. So we'll see. Um, My best available at this point is still Zach Levine. And then after that, Jaden Ivey, Anthony Simons, Trey Murphy are some of my other guys. uh, They're still available that I like. Um, I'm not going to add them to my queue. I, it tends to happen that when I add players to my queue that they end up getting taken. So I'm going to be smart and avoid that this draft. Uh, But maybe saying it out loud was enough. Hopefully not though. Hopefully not. So after Jalen Duran, Anthony Simons went great pick. Um, Brandon Miller, Jabari, Jabari Smith, and Shaden Sharp. And I think okay, so let's see. I have Shaden Sharp seventy third in my ranks. Brandon Miller seventy nine. And I really need to adjust this and drop Derek White because yeah, I need to do that as soon as I get done with this update the rankings and drop Derek White because I forgot to do that after because I forgot to update after the Drew Holiday trade. That's what I forgot to do. So I'll do that. Uh, Derek White, between me being very high on him this year and just trying to tailor dynasty ranks to both to any kind of draft strategy, whether it's a rebuild or a win now. I had Derek White 85th before the trade, uh, but I'm definitely going to be dropping him quite a bit now that he's not the starter. Uh, because, heck, if he was the starter and they ended up doing really well, then it may have happened um, where he could stick around and continue to have value. But um, So let's see, after Shaden Sharp, I uh, went LeBron and Zach Levine. Um, it looks like that may have been another auto pick. So all of these, uh, <laughs> it's a really great team this year. If everybody can stay healthy. It's Embiid, KD, AD, John Morant, Kawhi Leonard, LeBron. Um, at least a couple of those weren't auto picks. So maybe he's kind of in and out because John Morant wouldn't have been auto drafted if that were the case. But um, so after Zach Levine went Trey Murphy, good picks by Mark there. Um, taking some guys that I definitely had my eye on. Not that I was confident that they'd make it back around to me, but kind of, kind of had my fingers crossed. Um, but the next guy on my best available is Jaden Ivey. So, Hoping he he gets back around to me, but I'm not super hopeful at this point. Um, yeah. So Brandon Miller went with the eighth pick of the sixth round, which should be just pick 68. Um, I'm not – I think I've probably said this on this podcast before, but my frustrations with Brandon Miller come from the fact that he should have been drafted third, but I – which in turn makes me in my mind say what a bad pick, but I still had him as the third best prospect in this draft class. I think from a nine cat fantasy perspective, you, 
you take the Thompson twins before him uh, because of their defensive and playmaking upside. But I think just a basketball standpoint, I had Miller um, as the third best prospect in this class. So no issue taking him uh, there, even if it was about, I think, a round earlier than I had him. Let me check. Yeah, I had him at 79, he went 68. About a round early for me, but heck, if you believe in him, go for it. I have no problem reaching on rookies that you believe in because it's probably the latest you're ever going to be able to draft him. Um, so Trey Murphy went first pick of the seventh round, then Nikola Vucevic and Jairus Walker. Um, the rookies are starting to come off the board. He's the first one outside of that top five um, who was drafted. So uh, that means... Anthony Black would have been the next in the actual draft order, but uh, Jairus Walker was the next one. And there goes Jaden Ivey. So I will not be getting uh, Jaden Ivey in this draft and getting really good value. But I think that was really good value to get him at, let's see, pick 76, and I have him ranked 61. Um, really high on his upside. Um, I think it might just take a little bit longer to get there because he's sharing the court with some other really good uh, playmakers. Um, so after Ivy went Julius Randall, Tari Eason, uh, I think the best available for my team right now is Bradley Beal and then Drew Holiday, Keegan Murray. Um, so I probably, I know I was going to stick to my rankings, but I kind of want to just go off the rails and just take Drew Holiday and totally skip my rankings, which would be, Kind of crazy, but um, have well, okay. No, I won't. I need to stop saying it out loud. No, I need to say it out loud because that's part of the podcast experience. But Drew Holiday just went as soon as I was talking about him. Um, and then Rudy Gobert. So three picks, two more picks until I pick. Um, and I will be looking down. Let's see. So Bradley Beal and Keegan Murray are my next two best available. And then DeMar DeRozan, I think. I might have to veer off my dynasty rankings if I'm having to take DeMar DeRozan um, with this team. So Cam Johnson just went. So hopefully I can get my choice of either Bradley Beal or Keegan Murray. And I think I might just go with Beal and then try and get Keegan Murray on the flip um, if I'm able to here. And it looks like this might end up being an auto draft here, um, which would mean... DeMar would go off and great. I can go ahead and get Bradley Beal. Be great for me. Nope, not going to be an auto pick. Jalen Green, a 10th pick of the seventh round. I was kind of wondering when he would go because I just saw him available there. So <sighs> Bradley Beal really doesn't fit my team's timeline, though. I really need to just go Keegan Murray. I think I'm just going to do it. I'm going to veer off my rankings and just go Keegan Murray because it makes more sense um, because, well, for one, I literally have an article in the Roto World Draft Guide about how to use rankings and saying to not do what I've been kind of doing. Um, I was kind of curious how it would end up, and plus that way I'm not having to talk through an entire 25 rounds of a dynasty mock draft while also deciding on each individual pick and how it fits with the rest of my team, but I'm going to do my best to kind of do that um, and use my rankings as a guideline and not as a set list that I have to follow because it's a great article. And I would just totally just going back on my word and what I said I, that you should do. So I'm going to go back and, uh, and try and do that. Uh, so Dan just went Jakob Pertl um, and DeMar DeRozan. So the next best somewhat young guy, I have to decide between Rob Williams and Markel Fultz, but I think I need to drop Rob Williams now that he's in Portland down my rankings. Maybe I don't. What about, what am I looking at? Oh, I don't have a single center aside from Mobley. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go Rob Williams. Not that I, uh, that's another thing is to not draft for position. Um, and I know I'm saying that and I'm going to go ahead and do that, but since it was kind of like a, okay, am I going to go Rob Williams or Markel Fultz or I think, was it Bradley Beal? Yeah. So Bradley Beal doesn't fit my team's timeline. Robert Williams or Markel Fultz are my next two available. I have Rob Williams higher than Markel Fultz. I just needed to, to decide if I was going to drop 
Rob Williams down my rankings at all because of the trade. Um, but I still really like the talent. Um, even if it isn't great for me this year or as good for me this year, I'm happy to get Rob Williams there. And I think it was kind of a deciding factor for me because I did have one flex spot open, but I hadn't drafted either of my center spots and Mobley was the only center eligible player. Um, there's not a ton of, maybe there is, let me look at what other centers are available, how much I could have waited. So the guys with center eligibility, it's a lot of old guys. So I guess I could have waited and gone Zach Collins, Paul Reed. Those are guys that I like Nas Reed, um, maybe taking a flyer on Derek lively. And I'm, Oh, wow. Okay. So no, I won't be taking a flyer on Derek Lively because he just went with the seventh pick of the eighth round. And I know I'm, I was a little lower on him in my rankings. Let me see where I had him ranked because um, I know it was lower than I – so I had him 143, and he just went um, 91. But I, I don't have as much of an issue with it because originally I was high on him, and then – uh, Josh Lloyd had posted on Twitter saying what rookies you know are going to start on their team aside from the top three picks. And I commented, oh, Derek Lively, because I'm thinking Dallas has no centers. And he had said that he had heard, which I don't have inside sources. I know he has some sources, uh, that Lively wasn't doing well and camp didn't look good. Um, so I was like, okay, so I'll drop him down my ranks. Um, things like it looks like Derek Lively – Reports said that he kind of progressed over the last few weeks. Um, he was able to start in their last preseason game um, alongside Luca, Kyrie, Grant Williams, and Olivier Max Pro- Maxence Prosper. Um, so I have no problem taking him there because I'm not saying he's going to start. There's he might, he might not. Um, but the fact they wanted to give him that look, I feel better about it. So, and uh, from what I remember, he didn't. I only looked at the box score, barely watched the game, but I think he had like two points, five boards at a block. So nothing spectacular, but I think he has a lot of upside as a shot blocker. Um, but just to recap, um, so I think, okay, so after, we'll just go back to the seventh round before I even picked. So after Rudy Gobert with, okay, so we'll go Drew Holiday, seventh round, pick seven. Then it went Rudy Gobert, Cam Johnson, Jalen Green. I went Keegan Murray. Then Dan went Jakob Pertle, DeMar DeRozan. I went Robert Williams, second pick of the eighth round. And then it went Brooke Lopez, Dan Gafford, Michael Porter Jr., Bradley Beal. And then that's when Derek Lively went with the seventh pick of the eighth round. And then Tyus Jones, Wendell Carter Jr., Markel Fultz, Chris Middleton, Anthony Black, and now Jeremy Grant to start round nine. Um, I think the Middleton one was an auto draft, but it looks like he's in there now. So maybe we'll get more of a uh, dynasty pick, although he's kind of all in on a win now build. So this is what, you know, this method is getting just the Uber win now team, getting a lot of value on old guys later in the draft because everybody's avoiding them because they're really old and not going to have much value. And then you leave the league after one year. It's not an ethical strategy. It's not a good strategy. Do not do this strategy, but but it's technically a strategy and he's keeping it up. Oh no, it says timer expired. So he went CJ McCollum here. So yeah, this is, that's what the strategy is. This is the, I'm going to join this league for one year, win and leave. Now he does have a lot of health question marks. Maybe that's not um, a guarantee, but, and obviously that's not actually what he's trying to do. I just think because it's auto drafting, it's kind of funny, but uh, after McCollum, it went Zach Collins there. So I wasn't able to get, a couple of the centers that I liked were like Dan Gafford, Derek Lively, Zach Collins didn't come back around me. So I'm happy with my Robert Williams pick, happier, um, especially seeing how the rest of the draft is kind of shaken out. Um, let me see if I can look through my rankings quickly and find anybody that hasn't gone yet that would end up being really good value. Ooh, do I need to get oh, – okay. I can't even look at players. I was literally about to say – Ooh, Andrew Wiggins is still there. And then I click back. And he just got taken. Um, so that means that my best available is Derek White, but I need to drop him down my rankings, and I'm not going to take him here. Um, so is my next best available Julius Randle, or did he get taken? He did get taken. Okay, we're good. I'll have to take Julius Randle then. So Jeremy Sohan, Benedict Matherin, and Jada McDaniels are my next three best available because I need to ignore Derek White. Matherin just went. 
um, which means I can probably tell you. Okay, so John Collins wins. There's two more picks. So if it's Sohan and Jade McDaniels and somebody has hacked this uh, recording and is able to see everything I'm saying and listen to it, and multiple people are in on this, everybody is in on this, it's just about can we get Noah frustrated? I can't even type it in. I'm really nervous. Somebody's going to take my pick. Okay, Keontae George. So I'm going to get either Sohan or uh, Jade McDaniels, which is – that's good. I like that. And now we wait because there is one more pick before me. I'm gonna actually – I'm going to risk it. I'm going to go ahead and add Jade McDaniels to my queue. And then scroll, maybe I'll just search Sohan. Find Sohan, add him to my queue. And hopefully Dan won't take whichever one I don't take. Because, well, I'll take, okay, so Spencer didn't what he just went. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go Jade McDaniels because I have them right next to each other. In, or two, Jeremy Sohan at 90 and Jade McDaniels at 92. But today I just feel like Jade McDaniels um, going to be who I'm going to go with. And I'm just going to do it. So to get him at 107, and I have him ranked at 92, very happy about that. Um, so if Dan takes Sohan from me, which I'm, he might, can't rule it out, can't rule it out, uh, then I'll probably go Emmanuel quickly because um, he is my next best at 93. So he went Trey Jones, Paul Reed. So I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and grab Sohan. Um I don't know whether he starts this year for San Antonio or not. We'll just have to see. Uh, but I think long-term he is a starter for them. Um, they also did a, a media day photo with Trey Jones not in it with Wemby, Devin Vassell, Kelton Johnson, Sohan, and Zach Collins. So could they just run Jeremy Sohan as point forward, point guard kind of guy? Maybe... That would be really good for fantasy, but I don't really see it happening. But I'm still happy to get him there because I think long-term um, he should be a starter or the starter there. Whether it's, oh, Webby's ready to move to center. We're good on Zach Collins now. Sohan at the four, Kelton Johnson at the three. Or, eh, Kelton Johnson can shoot and he can score, but Sohan helps us win more. Okay, we'll start him. Or they do the really, really fun thing and say, we like Trey Jones, but he's not really like a point guard of the future. He's just a solid point guard. We like him as a sixth man. Point forward Jeremy Sohan, that's what we like. So fingers crossed, but I'm happy to get him there. It's a lot of value for me. Um, Herb Jones, third pick of round 10, and then Denny Abdija, fourth pick of round 10. Um, Yeah, so – some good picks so far, um, like a lot of good picks. I don't think there's anybody that has been tremendously early. Um, I feel like I'm getting some good value in my picks based on my rankings, but obviously if other people, like there's other dynasty analysts in here likely following their own dynasty rankings. Um, so they might think that they're getting really good value. So that's why it's important to uh, consume a wide variety of content, um, and get different opinions, um, different perspectives on guys. I mean, heck, I'm low on Austin Reeves, but getting him, he just went, um, what is that? Pick 115, and he's going in the 80s in redraft, and he's still young, and he has an industry. That's, that's tremendous value. Where do I even have him ranked? Because I know I'm like a bit lower on him. So I have him at 102. So great value there. Great, great value. Um, but I believe so Aaron Gordon took so Marcus Smart and Aaron Gordon were the two picks after that. Uh, Emmanuel Quickly and Josh Hart were the two picks before Reeves. My best available right now, I believe, is Terry Rozier, who is a who is my 100th ranked player. So good value. Um, if I can get him back around, but whenever he goes, I think that's gonna end up being a, a really good pick. All right, and then we got 
So we've had a few rookies come off the board. So this isn't the first one, but uh, Bilal Koulibaly just went off. Or no, excuse me. It's Bilal Koulibaly. Bilal Koulibaly. Yeah. I remember that I'd been saying it wrong and had looked it up and had practiced. Uh, I'd be able to say it right. And then I totally forgot about that. So I still may have said it wrong. Still a really good chance, but wanted to uh, correct myself if I could. So hopefully I did. Um, and yeah, this is uh, the auto draft team here. So I'm imagining that it'll end up being them taking uh, Derek White here. Um, unless something. Yep. So Derek White just went off the board. And uh, that leaves Terry Rozier as the best available for redraft in their scoring, which means he won't be getting back to me. Um, but also the best available on my board. So this will actually end up being a really good pick for them, <laughs> even if it is auto-drafted. And then after that, my next best available will be PJ Washington. Hopefully he can get back around to me. Um, so Derek White went and then Mitch Robinson to wrap up round 10. And now we're starting off round 11 with Taylor Hendricks. And then we'll see if this is an auto-draft that ends up resulting in Terry Rozier being the next selection. <sighs> Hopefully you're not just listening to this. I hope everyone that's uh, in there is watching this because I'm sure it's, it's arguably the most awkward podcast of all time. Um, if you're just listening to it. if you're watching it, hopefully it's a little bit better, a little bit more entertaining. But if you're just listening, I apologize. Um, surprisingly, it went Quentin Grimes here and Buddy Healed, and now Terry Rozier. So Terry Rozier made it past the auto draft, but not back around with me. But I don't think that the auto draft was an auto draft. Like I said, I think that they're kind of in and out. So uh, my next couple best available at this point are PJ Washington, because I don't think he's gone. Um, Gary Trent Jr. And I think, yeah, Kelton Johnson hasn't gone either. Those are my next few. Dyson Daniels, maybe. Um, D'Angelo Russell just went, so I don't have to worry about taking him. AJ Griffin just went. That's, man, that's, I like that. Okay, so, because I have... AJ Griffin at 126. And I think he just went 126. Yeah, he just went 126. So spot on there. I love it. I'm just sad that I couldn't get him. Um, but then after him, it went Ben Simmons. And then Kevin Herter. So two more picks before me. Um, I'm imagining that I'll be able to get. Okay, so Jalen. They're taking all my Hawks, man. Uh, at least I was able to start off the draft with Trey Young, so I wasn't having to uh, – now I don't have to reach for anybody like taking Kobe Bufkin next round or anything like that. Um, RJ Barrett just went, so now I'm on the clock, which leaves PJ Washington as my best available. <sighs> i got to decide how much I even like that. Is this where I kind of say, yeah, maybe my rankings aren't as perfect as I think they are? Not that I actually think that they're perfect, but I'll just – do it. Uh, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. I don't know exactly how things are going to look in Charlotte um, with Miles Bridges back and Gordon Hayward there, Brandon Miller drafted. So I don't know if PJ Washington's the starter, but I really like his talent. He's been like really good for fantasy. This guy that gets you over a steal, over a block, and over a three per game. Um, whether he's six or I mean, he just signed a new contract in Charlotte, so I don't think they get rid of him. But Miles Bridges only on a one year deal that he was only able to get because that's all he was able to get. Um, so could he he easily could sign elsewhere next year if he's like I'm sick and tired of Charlotte because. They just haven't been a real well-run organization, um, and he can go get paid elsewhere. I so then that would leave PJ Washington with the starting job, and he's going to end up being much better in redraft than 
getting him at the end of the 11th round. He's still young. And then freaking Dan took Case and Wallace, and I love Case and Wallace. Um, but my best available here are Gary Trent, Keldon Johnson, and Dyson Daniels. Don't really have many centers in this range on my rankings, and I don't want to reach too much. So I'm not going to go and fill out my second center spot, even if I'm technically looking at a reserve here. Okay, so wait, I have 10 seconds. Let me make this pick, and then I'll uh, – I'm going to get this off. Just barely. Okay, cool. I had to stop my uh, talking because I'm trying to explain how everything goes, and then I was like, wait a minute, I'm about to auto-draft – would I've auto drafted Draymond Green? Um, glad I got there in time. Um, so now, Kelvin Johnson, Dyson Daniels. Uh, I think Trey Jones went, or was it just Tyus that went? Or maybe it was just Tyus Jones that went. So maybe Trey Jones is still there. Um, Tobias Harris is still there. These are kind of my best available guys. Um, Clint Capella, yeah, he's still there. So that's kind of who we're looking at um, as some really good value picks based on my rankings coming up. Uh, but after I went Gary Trent with James Wiseman, Jalen Suggs, Clay Thompson. And now we are about halfway through round 12 here. And we are 50 minutes into this draft, so it should be on pace to finish after about two hours, assuming it doesn't slow down at any point. Hopefully it won't. Because I can only, that means I'm less than halfway through just talking to myself for two hours. So we're uh, we're getting through it. But what better to talk to yourself about the dynasty hoops? I mean, what's better than that? So after Clay it went, D'Anthony Melton, Peyton Watson, Bruce Brown. A lot of fun picks right there. Melton is always great when he gets the opportunity. <laughs> it's just about getting the opportunity. He was both in Memphis and in Philly when he got the chance to start was great at providing steals, blocks, threes, points. It's just that for some reason that coaches don't want to use him as much as they probably should um, or as much as they could given his statistical output. Uh, but Peyton Watson should fill in as one of the key backups uh, in Denver this season. I mean, they lost Jeff Green and uh, Bruce Brown who was actually the next pick. Now they're trying to replace them with Christian Brown and Peyton Watson. So Watson had a played in two summer league games was okay in one and really, really good in the other. So obviously that always translates, but we'll see. Um, and then Bruce Brown should start in Indiana. I imagine he'll start in Indiana. They wouldn't give him a two year, $45 million deal to bring him off the bench. I wouldn't think, but things change if they're, uh, trying to win, but he is a guy that's definitely going to help them win. So whether he comes off the bench or plays a big role, he's going to be really good for them. Um, and then Patrick Williams, Draymond Green, Tobias Harris. Now we're on the last pick of round 12. Patrick Williams is a guy that I'm not super high on. Um, I know there are people that are high on him, like his talent, like his upside. I just, I remember specifically like, really questioning why he was going forth um, in his draft. And I just have never come around on him and been able to say, oh, okay, I kind of see it. Um, I think what it was is in 2019 when we when the Hawks drafted uh, DeAndre Hunter for the overall, every like people were saying, oh, okay, like he's going to be the next Kawhi Leonard. I I was people I was people saying he was going to be the next Kawhi Leonard because I was this was my uh, dreamy phase for the Hawks. The rebuild is always so fun, and the end result's never as fun as what you imagine it, it'll be because the year before we drafted our next Steph Curry and Trey Young and the next Clay Thompson and Kevin Herter. Um, and then we went and drafted Kawhi and Paul George, the next draft with DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish. So all that to say the rebuild is always significantly more fun than what actually ends up happening. But the year after that, it was like, okay, they said this guy's gonna be the next DeAndre or the next Kawhi Leonard. And I'm like, we just said that about DeAndre Hunter. Not that he was bad as a rookie, but I'm like, everybody can't be the next Kawhi Leonard just because they have a mid-range pull-up and are good defensively. I like, I'm like, I don't think Patrick Williams is bad. I don't think it's bad value here. Let me actually see where I have him ranked. Um, I have him 133, and this was 
he went 141. So good value. Um, I think this draft just has guys going earlier than I would take them. So I, I'm, not, I'm not having an issue with the pick. I'm just talking about him as a player. I'm just not as high on him. Um, but at that value, <laughs> that value is totally fine. Um, after, so Draymond, Tobias Harris, Clint Capella <sighs> started off round 13 with Dyson Daniels, uh, Nikola Jovic, Nikola Jovic, Jovic. Trying to, I saw a video. I actually needed to probably watch the video before I try and pronounce everything. Um, where it was talking about uh, Serbian Serbian names. Gosh, I don't want to totally say everything wrong. I think it was Serbian names how to pronounce them. I um, mean, I need to. I, I bookmarked it so I could go back and watch it. Um, anyways, this is again. This is what I warned you about at the beginning that I'm going to get off on tangents and get off topic and just start talking. Uh, but it's it's how we get through when uh, sometimes the clock is taking the full 45 seconds. It's how we uh, get through it. But. After uh, Jovic went, Cam Whitmore, Nas Reed, and Yusuf Nurkic, uh, the new Suns starting center, and then he bits the Zubats. Uh, Zubats, and then Jonathan Kuminga. Zubats is the starting center for the Clippers. Um, but that doesn't mean it's great for fantasy. I really liked him heading into last season because he was – the only center on the freaking roster and they still can give him 30 minutes per game or maybe barely give him 30 minutes per game. I'm like, you guys don't have another center. Like, what else are you going to do? But they figured out a way to make it work. Um, now that I'm about to be back on the clock, let me see if I can find some value here. It doesn't look like, all right. I should have been paying more attention. Let me see. Is Trey Jones gone? Yeah. Okay. I don't remember when he went. Dyson one next best available per my rankings. Is it Isaiah Jackson? I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Actually, no, I'm going to, I'm going to get a, a rookie that I like. I'm going to get Grady Dick. He uh, may not play much this year, but I think he has a good bit of upside um, as a scorer specifically, but I think he can also do other things as well. So now I have to decide if I'm going to get another Atlanta Hawk and Sadiq Bay, or if I'm going to get Isaiah Jackson, I just feel like I'm high on Isaiah Jackson because of Jared Johnson and because he had a lot of upside, but now it's, I don't know. Um, yeah, so after I took Grady, it went Colin Sexton, Kavon Looney. So now I'm back on the clock, and i got to decide if I'm going to go with Isaiah Jackson or Sadiq Bey or if there's somebody else that I like. I uh, think I might go Isaiah Jackson, and this is – because he still has upside. I don't know. If he, uh, when he gets to play, he's always really great. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take him there. That was the second pick of the 14th round, so 158, and I had him ranked at 138. So looks like good value based on that, although I feel like my ranking has him a little bit higher um, than maybe it it should be. I don't know, because now I'm looking at some of these other guys available here I feel like are solid but maybe don't have the upside that he has. So I'm not mad about it. Just feel like it's so questionable uh, because Miles Turner's there and isn't leaving now. So are they trading Isaiah Jackson, or or is there like a reason that they just haven't moved on from Miles Turner? Not because obviously Miles Turner is an incredible player, but if they really felt highly about Isaiah Jackson, would they have tried to trade Miles Turner at this point? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, so I, I'm happy with the upside pick though, because um, I can get my upside swings out of the way over the next few rounds, and then maybe try and get some more win now pieces towards the end of the draft. Um, this is 25 rounds. So it's exactly uh 300 players drafted and I have my top 300 in front of me. Uh, 
the Roto World Draft Guide only has my top 200 uh, because this, that's just the way it's formatted. It wouldn't let me do a top 300 when I try to put it in. Um, so I don't know what, if that'll end up being uh, something I release at some point. I probably need to update it. Maybe throughout the season I'll release my top 300 because I don't know how much uh, the draft guide will be updated with preseason dynasty rankings. So maybe I'll update both. I'll do both. Uh, to where it's a top 300 that's significantly more useful for dynasty drafts than a top 200. Um, and maybe I'll go further and like try and do what Matt Lawson does and rank all 500 something players. Everybody that is plays basketball professionally or at least in college Matt has a dynasty ranking for and an evaluation for because he does incredible work. So maybe I'll try and get to that level. It'll probably take me a long time, but that's why Matt's the goat. Uh, so after, so I went Isaiah Jackson, then it went Jonas Valanciunas, Jalen Williams, the other one, the other one in OKC, uh, Isaiah Stewart, Jordan Clarkson, Jaden Hardy, Dennis Schroeder, uh, starting, Point guard for the Toronto Raptors, Dennis Schroeder, mind you. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt, and then Sadiq Bey, who, if I'm not mistaken, was my next best available. Getting him at the end of round 14, I have him ranked 140. So that was 166 where he was taken. So now I have to find somebody else to take if they make it back around to me. I think my next best available that I've – I don't think Cole Anthony's been taken. You, like that's got this is ridiculous. I literally just said that, and then he got taken. This is ridiculous. Okay, so then after Cole, like what? Uh, after Cole Anthony, it went Matisse Thybul. Um, goodness gracious. So as Nas, yeah, Nas Reed has been taken. Peyton Watson, Leonard Miller is my next best available. That's an upside swing. Yeah, yeah. Leonard Miller is an upside swing, and I'm going to take Leonard Miller if he makes it back around to me. But goodness, man, I uh, I need to stop saying – I need to say these out loud, but I need to not say them out loud because I don't know what's happening, and this is getting frustrating. Um, thankfully, it's just a mock, though, so we're all good. Leonard Miller, I think Jaden Hardy got picked. So Malachi Branham, another guy that I have ranked uh, 159 so we could value. I don't think – is Bobby Portis – Bobby Portis has not been taken. Let me search him up. Yep, now he's right there. Bobby Portis hasn't been taken. Andrew Nem, I always say I'm going to look it up. Nem, Nemhard uh, hasn't been taken. Josh Green, I feel like that's high for Christian Wood to have him at 165. So maybe I won't. Um, Dylan Brooks and then Leonard Miller just went. So great. Uh, Dante DiVincenzo, that's high for Dylan Brooks, for, in my opinion. He's not in my top 200. But, I mean, he's committing. that. That's the uh, the win-now team. So I never have an issue. That, that's the thing with, with Dynasty is between punt builds and roster construction and team direction, like you can make guys fit your build in a way that brings them far more value than – I always just compare it to fantasy football, which I know not everybody that plays fantasy basketball played fantasy football, but in fantasy football, since it's just points and your points are from yards, catches and touchdowns, really, that's pretty much it. Like, obviously there's other little things as well, but, um, and then losing points for interceptions, fumbles. It's what team you're on does. I mean, it's okay. I guess it's also like points leagues for basketball, like same thing Duh. um, I don't know why I have to compare it to fantasy football, but like points leagues, it's whoever scores the most points. There's more ways to score points in fantasy basketball, which gives players different value. But at the end of the day, points are points um, with category leagues. In a category dynasty league, I think you can fit just about anybody to your team's either direction or punt build and make a pick justifiable um, as long as it's not totally outlandish. Like I don't think taking Dylan Brooks four rounds earlier would have been justifiable, but in the 15th round, I don't have an issue with it. Um, but I'm about to be back on the clock. And I believe Malachi Branham is my next best available. And at this point, all right, so I have my starting lineup, um, even though I'm 
not loving Isaiah Jackson calling him a starting center. So hopefully some of those other guys will get eligibility for center, or I can just add another center. That's more win now later, uh, like a Mason Plumlee or something in a handful of rounds. So I'm just going straight upside swing now. And Malachi Branham is the next highest in my rankings. I believe he, yeah, he was a rookie last year. San Antonio obviously has a lot of talent. So this isn't guaranteed that he's able to even make much of an impact this year. But I'm taking upside swings right now. So Josh Green will be the next guy I take. I type this in and Dan takes him. Not going to be happy. Not going to be happy. And then if he doesn't take him, oh, maybe I can get Malik Monk's still there. Really? I feel like Malik Monk is like a guy that people want in redraft. And he's still young. He's like 24, 25. Right? Now I got to look that up. Hey, he's 25. We'll turn 26 in February. Um, ooh, Dan getting Fezenkov. Nice. Maybe I just go Malik Monk. I mean, he might be better than Josh Green this year. And he's 25. I think I'm just going to go Malik Monk unless Dan hops in and, and snipes him from me. So hopefully he doesn't. That'd be really mean of Dan. But we uh, – yeah, I, I think I like Malik Monk better than Josh Green. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's only three spots of difference in my rankings, so not a major issue. Also, this was – I think I did these before – it seemed like there was three guaranteed starters in Dallas. I thought for sure he was going to start, but if they were going with Omax and Derek Lively, I'm like, huh, how do they feel about Josh Green? I don't know. But I know Malik Monk's going to be good. I know he's going to be the sixth man in Sacramento. And yeah, I think I'm going to go Malik Monk because I think he would go before the 16th round in redraft. And so getting him in Dynasty when he's 25 years old, I like that. That's That's nice. I'm happy with that. Um, so that would leave Josh Green and Christian Wood as the best available. Uh, Bojan Bogdanovic as well. I don't think Kelly Oubre has been taken. Usman Jiang, but I imagine Jiang will go uh, soon because a lot of guys like his upside, especially with Dynasty with other analysts. I imagine he'll go, but this is really just me trying to Hit him with that reverse jinx a little bit. Because when I say I'm going to take somebody, they get taken immediately after. But if I say, oh, it's a guarantee, everybody else is going to take them, not even thinking I can get them, maybe it'll work out for me. Maybe. Uh, so after I went Malik Monk, I uh, went Poku, Jonathan Isaac, Kobe White, Podziemski from Golden State's Brandon Podziemski, and then Max Christie. Uh, so we're halfway through round 16. Um, I like that Christie pick a lot. I think there's a chance that he actually is part of LA's rotation this year. Um, a lot of the quotes coming out of there are high on him, and he was really he was awesome in summer league. So I think there's a chance he cracks the rotation this year. Maybe. Maybe. And there it goes. Okay, well, worth a shot. Uh, so after Christie, it went uh, Jamie Jacquez, uh, Kobe Bufkin, and then there it goes Jiang. So... Josh Green is still there. Maybe I get Josh Green the way back with him. Let me uh I totally missed that Bobby Portis is still there. Shoot. Okay. So Bobby Portis is my best available. Um dang. He's sitting right there too. I should have absolutely seen that. Um gosh, I wish I could just take Kevin Porter Jr. out of this available pools player, so I don't have to see him as one of the best available just because I'm not going to take him. So anyways, Grant Williams just went. Um, I think he's a better player for Dallas than he is as a fantasy guy, but who knows? Maybe being <laughs> the third best player on the team will be really good for him. And he's going to, it looked earlier. I, I only watched the game for a little bit, but um, in the few minutes that I watched, he got a, he shot a three on three straight possessions. Like having Luca and Kyrie is giving him a bunch of open looks. Now, granted, will that change when we get to the regular season after 
and it'll be different from a first preseason game, maybe. But he's a good defender, too. I don't know how much else he provides, but I like that. Uh, Santi Aldama and Malcolm Brogdon to wrap up round 16 and start round 17. And then Nick Richards, the second center option in Charlotte. Um, so now we're on to round 17. Josh Green's still there. Bobby Portis is still there. Bojan Bogdanovic is still there. Russell Westbrook's still there. Maybe that's not super surprising. I have him 182. We're on pick. What is that? Oh, maybe it is a little bit surprising because this is 195 right now. Pick 195, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely speaking some of this into existence because Russell Westbrook and freaking Bobby Portis just went. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So it'll be pick. Uh, what will I pick at? So I'll pick two of three um, for this one. Christian Brown just went, that's a good pick. Dang. I need to uh, bump him up my rankings. I had him at 180. So it's still good value. I'm just trying to get the best value based on my rankings um, as much as possible because value is important. Um, but I think making the decision in the moment instead of just strictly following the guidelines is important. So I don't know. It's using all of the information in front of you as opposed to just blindly following something. That's that's the point I'm trying to uh, hammer home here. So defer, but maybe not fully commit. I don't know. I'm kind of doing both right now. That's that's the point, doing both. Uh, so after Christian Brown went, Bryce Sensabaugh says that all three Utah rookies are now gone. And then a few just flew off the board because of – so he said his cue went auto draft. So we had Stephen Adams, Cam Thomas, Caleb Martin. One more pick before me. So I think I, yep. And then Kelly Olynyk. Cool. So I can go ahead and get Josh Green. Boy, am I glad that I uh, passed on him last round. I don't know if Malik Monk went back, would have came back around to me, but I know that Josh Green is. And then Dan went and got Omax and Mike Conley. Good picks. A, a win now and a young guy. I mean, that, that's not a bad strategy at this point of the draft to just go one win now one young guy um if my young guy is josh green because he's still technically young even though he's i think this is oh gosh is it year three or year four for him still young um i'm gonna go with christian wood i think over bo young ah maybe i should go back on a bit christian was a little younger uh I'm going to go Christian Wood because I don't really get him many places. And I I don't know. Kind of feeling it. Maybe Bojan Bogdanovic will make it back around to me. Who knows? That happened uh, last time. So Everybody's starting to go young guys here. Jordan Walsh, Corey Kispert, and Jordan Hawkins just went. And I think, I'm, uh, I think Jordan Walsh has a lot of upside. I like him a lot. He's just very much a long-term guy. Uh, Corey Kisper has a chance to produce this year. I think his upside is just more limited, but I still like him a lot this year because he's going to start in Washington, I think. Uh, I guess the, it's not really confirmed, but I imagine he's a starting small forward. And he's not going to provide you much outside of threes, but I think he's going to get a high enough volume while still being able to not kill your field goal percentage and score enough points, even if he will be competing with Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma as they're chucking shots all night. But uh, then Jordan Hawkins and Jet Howard, another young guy, and then Isaiah Hartenstein or Steen, and then Catavius Caldwell, Caldwell Pope and Jalen Hood Shafino. All the long names in a row. Um, yeah, good mix of young guys and rookies. I think that's the hardest part about uh, one making or doing a draft, and two, like an honestly harder part is making dynasty rankings that aren't focused on a direction. I think. Everybody that's done dynasty rankings that are, you know, either, okay, here's your rankings if you're tanking and here's or rebuilding, and here's your rankings if you're trying to go win now or retooling. I think all that's awesome. I haven't done that because that's a lot of work. It's a lot of extra work. I just haven't done it yet. I probably will at some point um, because I think that's far more applicable. My rankings are, I just try to make it as 
as much value based as possible, but it's hard to, because value is going to be different to everybody based on what position they need, what categories they need help with and what age they need. So general value is, is what I tried to go with, um, with my ranks. So hard to say, um, because obviously other people, everybody values players differently as well. Um, so after Jalen hood Shafino went Charles Bassey, Lou Dort, and then KJ Martin. So we've wrapped up 18 rounds now, and we're uh, an hour and 15 minutes in. So it's it's moving at a faster pace than the earlier parts of the draft were, um, I think mostly because the auto drafts are actually happening instead of taking the full 45-second clock. Um, so that's great because I'm not going to be talking for two hours straight, but who could pick there? Mark just got Lonzo ball who, uh, man, if he plays basketball again, that's going to be, I said Zion was still the draft. That's the steal of the draft. If Lonzo is able to come back and play basketball, I don't know. Is that going to happen? I, he might, I'd say it's a good chance that he eventually plays. I don't know what level it is, how often he plays things like that, but at this point, take your upside swings. Um, Luke Kennard just went. There's, I think he'll start the first 25 games. It, uh, maybe not every single time, but I think he's a starter early on. I think it's um, Marcus Smart, Desmond Bain, Luke Kennard, Jaron Jackson, Stephen Adams. I think they they might have other options. They might try other things. Okay, so we had KPJ just got auto picked. Um. <laughs> And he just apologized in the chat. So that's funny. Um, but we'll just uh, <laughs> we'll just keep it rolling um, just because, you know, it is what it is. Uh, actually, let me see. Yeah, so DeAndre Hunter just went after that. Um, and then there goes Bojan Bogdanovic. So we're halfway through round 19. Jake LaRavia just went. Now I have to figure out who I'm going to take now. Right. Brogdon went, right? I'm saying that like somebody can actually answer that for me. Yeah, Brogdon went. Um, pretty sure Kobe White went. Yeah, he did. Max Drews, Chris Duarte just went after Mojan Bochamp. Mojan Bochamp. Soup. I think Alex Caruso and Ochai Agbaji are my next best available. I need to switch over out of my top 200 on Roto World and back over to just my spreadsheet soon. I'm going to go Agbaji. If, yeah, he's still there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with him. Uh, get some more youth and then maybe starting after this, trying to get some more uh, win now, guys. Um, Baji's in my top 200. And then, oh, good pick, Dan, with Jaden Springer. So yeah, I'll go, I'll grab Caruso or Derek Whitehead with one of my next two picks. Damn, what THT? I'll go, I'm not really feeling Caruso. I'll get one now, guys, after. Oops. I'll just leave Caruso in my queue. Uh, which means he'll get taken. But that means that everybody in my top 200, I believe, has been taken at this point. Um, and that would leave, is it Josh Minow or Minot um, from Minnesota? One of my other next best available. I think I have him. What was that, 204? 204. Um, so Rui Hachimura, Patrick Baldwin, Precious Achua, and there goes Josh Minot or Minot. I need to look that one up too. 
Um, that's a good upside pick there late. Um, I like Precious Achua. I think we ought to see kind of how he looks like now that Nick Nurse is gone in Toronto. Uh, it's Kobe Brown and then um, Chris Murray, Keegan Murray's brother, who I think is a young guy that's also kind of a win-now guy because uh, I think he's going to come in very much NBA ready. I think if, he's kind of flown under the radar because you know what? Portland just acquired Rob Williams and Malcolm Brogdon. Obviously, Brogdon is not affecting his minutes, but I feel like they have a lot of talent there now. Maybe Chris Murray isn't going to be able to impact things the way I thought he would. Hmm. Um, but then Killian Hayes, Kelly Oubre uh, just went 10th pick of round 20. That seems really good. I mean, he's going to be probably the sixth man there. I'd say there's a chance he starts, but more than likely the sixth man. Um, but still is going to play a big role. I mean, getting in round 20, that kind of score, I think that's really good. Um, and yeah, it looks like people are starting to go with some more win now picks now. Um, so man, hopefully Caruso makes back around to me. If not, okay. No, he's not. Cause I just said it. I, I know I've said his name quite a few times, but it's funny how it happens as I'm saying it. Sometimes we'll go with that. Uh, so after Kelly Oubre went Terrence man, Daron Sharp, Al Horford to start round 21, Harrison Barnes, Gordon Hayward, Alex Caruso, there, fourth pick of round 21, David Roddy. And that's Orlando Robinson. First, first glance I saw, I thought it said Duncan Robinson, but that's Orlando Robinson. Um, which means my next best available is Norm Pell. Cool. So if he makes it back around to me, I will take him. Awesome. Um, and that's four more picks. Yeah, I think everybody likes taking upside swings late, and I think I do too. But I think that's where you're able to get value with when now guys. Because, I mean, Norman Powell is probably a guy that's going late in redraft. Um, so it's like I have a lot of young guys that I, I went with early um, that are still going to help me, you know, con- compete this year. But – Norm Powell is definitely a guy that I could throw in. It's going to give me, I mean, potentially 18 points, a couple threes. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and grab – oops, add him to my queue. I'll add him to my team. So after Orlando Robinson, it went Isaiah Joe, Ayuda Sunmu, Xavier Tillman, Cam Reddish, uh, and then I got Norm Powell. Um, and my next best available, I have to try and figure this out rather quickly because now it's starting to catch up to me. Um – Man, I'm not going to get great value anymore. I think it's Jalen McDaniels. So I get to pair him back with his brother as long as Dan doesn't ruin this for me. As long as Dan doesn't keep me from bringing this family back together, then just do the right thing, Dan. Just do the right thing. Or just let it auto-pick. That'll be the right thing. Um, If not, Brandon Clark is my next best available. He had the... um. Achilles injury, I believe. I believe it was Achilles that caused him to um, end his season early. Was it Achilles or was it knee? I don't remember. But I think he was still awesome when he's on the floor. As long as he can get back to kind of sort of what he was doing, it's going to be really good value in the 200s. I mean, shoot. Um, last pick of 21, that's 252. So I think that's really good value. I don't have to be able to get him there, but I'll probably go Jalen McDaniels. I liked him a lot uh, when he was with the Hornets, and then his role really decreased with Philly when I thought it was going to increase. So it was pretty surprising to me. Um, but I'm going to take a chance that he's able to crack Toronto's rotation at some point. Good pick, Dan. I know he auto drafted that, but good pick with Drew Eubanks because the moment you get Nurkic gets hurt, Eubanks is going to come in and, and play a big role. But I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, take a guy that I like in Jalen McDaniels, not just a guy that I, I have ranked high, but a guy that I, I actually feel good about with uh, Jalen McDaniels. And then the next two picks were Mo Wagner and Delon Wright, and then Bull Bull, fun one there. Um, so if Brandon Clark makes it back around to me, I think that'll be my next pick. Actually, let me look at this while he's uh, while I have this here. It was Achilles. Okay. So he's not going to be ready to start the season. I think I was kind of expected, which is why he's not being drafted in redraft leagues even late. Um, but when he gets back, I don't know when, but one day, one day. Um, I think after him would be Peyton 
Pritchard for me, and then Jose Alvarado. So I'm going to add them to my queue and keep my fingers crossed that nobody's listening. All right. And then that's Justin Chimp. Julian Champagny. Cool. So after uh, Bull Bull, it went Trey Mann, Julian Champagny, um, Royce O'Neal, and then Jordan Goodwin as we're getting close to round, rounding out pick 22. And I think like, what was it, like 10 rounds ago, I said, man, maybe I'll grab Mason Blumley as a win now piece. He's still there. So maybe I'll grab him. I feel like there's, I guess when you're looking at it, um, there it goes Peyton Pritchard and Rashawn Holmes. It's always fun to get the uh, the young guy that could pan out. Obviously, like I think that's probably one of the more fun parts of Dynasty is drafting somebody either that nobody knows about or just drafting somebody that's a rookie and watching their career unfold, like rooting for them to pan out. Like That stuff's fun. Um, but if you're trying to win and you're trying to you know, win your league year one through year five instead of just waiting till year five, which is, you know, fine. I love the the slow rebuild. I, I think it's a lot of fun to go through it. Um, but if you're trying to compete from year one and build for the future, I think it's best to go, you know, young and win now early and then choose either to go. I mean, I, I guess it depends on who falls to you. So there goes Brandon Clark. Dang, good pick in round 22, Mark. Um, you know, if you, if early on, you know, you get a Nikola Jokic or Nikola Jokic, 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 I'm going to go just Jokic until I watch that actual video, instead of trying to read the comments and, and see what everybody's saying. It's how it's pronounced. But, um, if you go with Jokic in the first round, then you're not obviously forced to be like, Oh, full win now, just cause he's 28. But I think that's kind of when you're like, okay, like, let me emphasize guys that are ready to help me win now over some youth, but you can still take uh, youth swings kind of in the mid to late parts of the draft. Um, and it looks like Mark may have let those auto pick. So you're telling me Brandon Clark would have made it back around to me. Dang, that hurts. Um, and then after, so Brandon Clark, Kyle Lowry starting off around 23, Chris Dunn. Cause it's like, Kyle Lowry could start at point guard this year for the Heat. You're able to get him in round 23. So if you're serious about winning now, I think since everybody kind of emphasizes young guys, you probably need to get them a little earlier because you can still get uh, guys that contribute this at this point of the draft. I mean, nobody's dying to draft Kyle Lowry, especially in Dynasty, but heck, he can contribute year one, especially if he starts. So. Um, after Kyle Lowry, it went Chris Dunn, James Naji, Larry Nance, Nick Smith, and I think it's Tristan Vukcevic, and then Ben Shepard. So you know, like you're able to get a guy like Kyle Lowry this later, like Mason Plumlee's still there, but like everybody's, I mean, some of the rookies might not pan out at all, and I did, or and you're able to get a guy, or I'm able to get a guy, or whoever is a guy that's going to start this year. Um, like Gabe Vincent's still there. He probably won't start for the Lakers, but there's a chance that he has a starting role. Uh, campaign will be the main backup point guard. There's a lot of uh guys that can help you win year one. I'm gonna go Jose Alvarado and then try and get Mason Plumley on the flip and keep. My, oh no, I should have done. Oh, what am I doing? Oh my gosh. I saw Dan was on auto draft. I should have absolutely went Mason Plumley and then I was like, oh, what am I doing? Dang it. Okay, that that's uh that's me being a bad fantasy manager right there. That was bad. Um shoot. All right. Um I think my next best available is Aaron Neesmith. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna veer off the the rails a little bit here, go off the rails and I'm going to take Gabe Vincent because I don't think D'Angelo Russell is going to be able to be a starter long-term. And I think Gabe Vincent ends up taking that at some point or that there's a good chance that he does. Maybe not guaranteed. <sighs> I can't believe I just blew that man. 
He has the auto draft thing there. I should have noticed that. Okay, so after I went Gabe Vincent, went Nasir Little, Chris Boucher. I like that. Gigi Jackson, Christian Coloco, Johnny Davis, Jalen Pickett. Oh gosh, Vasily Vasily Misich. That's that's my bad. <laughs> I should have at least uh, been able to to look up that and get you a a decent pronunciation, but it's wrong. Um, yeah, so this is kind of what it is. Um, I should know some of these guys. Let me see. Maybe I don't even know if I have him. Uh, yeah, I don't have him in my uh, top 300, but that's not saying that's a bad pick for sure, but that's partially why I guess I didn't know how to pronounce his name. So apologies for that, but um, we are at an hour and a half, and we are about to, to uh, finish this up. We're almost to – Almost done with round 24, which means we'll be on round 25 here in a second. So this will be my last pick. Um, always fun to do a, a fun pick to finish up the draft. So I'm going to search through a little bit here. Man, I'll add them to my queue just for the heck of it. Um, I don't even, I'm not even going to look at my rankings for this one, see who I have. But I'm just going to start adding some guys to the queue that I know I like. Or at least know, like, have a decent chance to see minutes this year. Freaking. Yeah, Julian Strother. Mark just got him. So after campaign, it went Dennis Smith Jr., Julian Strother, and then Monte Morris is Mark's last pick of the draft. I think I'm going to go to Monte Kamara if, uh, or Kamara. With my last pick, assuming he's there. Like he, he got traded to Portland as part of the uh the DeAndre Aiden. Well, I guess it's the Damian Lillard trade, but um and like I saw a report today that's saying that like he impressed rather quickly and everything in summer league, he was really good. So oh, or Marcus Sasser. I gotta decide there, but I have guys in my queue now. Um Okay, that's enough for rookies. I think I feel good about getting... Hmm, you know what? I'm just going to do it. If none of these guys, if all these guys go, I will go Dante Exum with my last pick for the heck of it. Because it's fun. He's, he'd be more of like the uh, team mascot kind of guy. Like Adam King will be happy that I drafted him because it's it's, it's our inside joke. So it'll just be like a piece of Adam is on my team, which is that's that's great for team chemistry. Uh, so that is uh, after Monte Morris, it went Tim Hardaway, Jabari Walker, Hunter Tyson, Amani Bates, and Zeke Naji. So I still have four guys in my queue. Jericho Sims just went five picks left. I have four guys in my queue. Um, so unless my top three go with the next three picks, I won't be selecting Dante Exum. Sorry, Adam. Um, I apologize for the false hope I gave anybody. Um, but yeah, hopefully these will fly across, uh, because I am getting tired and just kind of want to wrap up this draft. I probably won't do any sort of recap for each team the way I've been doing with the other mocks, but just because that's a lot, <laughs> um, to go through each team, but I, you know, it is what it is. I think, uh, Nothing is everything that has stuck out to me. I've mentioned, um, but when you get past a certain point, it's like I can follow my rankings, and I felt like I was getting good value every time. But team direction is too much of a factor to really evaluate every single draft and saying exactly how it goes. But I'm gonna get to Monty Kamara. I'll talk about my team. That's what I'll do when we get done. When Dan's last pick happens. Awesome. So who's Dan's last pick? Jackson Hayes. Good one. Good one. All right. Um, I'll do this. Now that we have this whole draft done, I will I'll just kind of move the draft board off. So uh, still had a few guys in the queue. Obviously, there's a ton of guys available. I mean, this is the thing about, you know, Dynasty is that when you're going – 
300 players, you still have guys. I mean, a lot of rotational pieces. I won't say a ton of starters. Blake Beasley has a chance to start. Dwight Powell, Dwight Powell has a chance to start. Um, but a lot of like rotational pieces that can contribute to winning year one, especially if you're thinking about it like a, a 300 – or excuse me, a 30 – not a 300 team, a 30 team dynasty. You're probably going deeper than this, about another 90 picks, probably going to go through 13 rounds. So a lot of these guys that, I mean, Kevin Love could start year one over Caleb Martin. Um, Aaron Neesmith is a guy that I had it ranked kind of high. So still really good value left, um, which is why in dynasty, you're probably wanting to go three. It depends on league size, but I'd probably say for like a 12 team, you're probably going to want to go at least, 360 picks um probably about there like a 30 team one you're probably gonna want to go 13 rounds go 390 just because there's so many guys like some of these guys in my opinion the way dynasty's played is not waiver wire consistent moves like you you shouldn't be worrying about a waiver wire unless there's a guy sitting on there that's just coming out of nowhere like i think the the fun part of dynasty is drafting guys watching them develop you know, making good decisions from a draft standpoint, trade standpoint, because the real NBA, like guys aren't just random. Like it's not a a 2K my career scenario where you're trying out at a random uh, pickup at a park tournament, playing well and earning an NBA contract. Like everybody, everybody goes to the draft. So in dynasty, everybody goes to the draft. Like that's the way you want to get guys. Um, obviously, you know, unless you're playing in a salary dynasty league, you're not going to be able to get uh, the true real life factor of contracts and player contracts expiring and signing with new teams. But I think it's more fun to draft and trade than to pick up on the waiver wire. But uh, to recap, I have Trey Young, Jalen Williams, OG Ananobi, Evan Mobley, Lowry Markin, and Brandon Ingram, Rob Williams, Isaiah Jackson. Keegan Murray, uh, Jaden McDaniels in my starting lineup. Um, mostly just went straight starters, and though I did wait a little bit and got Isaiah Jackson, but that's fine um, because I felt like I got good value at the picks before. And Jeremy Sohan, PJ Washington, Gary Trent, uh, Grady Dick, Malachi Branham, Malik Monk, Josh Green, Christian Wood, Ochai Akbaji, Derek Whitehead, Norman Powell, Jalen McDaniels, Jose Alvarado, Gabe Vincent, Tumani Kamara. I'm very happy with the draft. It may, there might be like, like some of these guys I'm in particularly really high on, but other ones I just feel like it's good value, um, which I think it's kind of important to understand the difference, but also understanding that both are useful. Like I'm, I'm a I'm very high on Trey Young, very high on Jalen Williams, very high on Mobley, uh, Markinen. I'm not like super high on Brandon Ingram or super high on OG Ananobi, but it was good value. So I'm very happy with those picks. Um, but yeah, I will uh, like with the other mock drafts. Which I haven't done this yet, but I will be doing a a written breakdown of all the mocks for the Roto World Draft Guide. So if you want to take a quick look, here is um, if you're watching it, here is the first twelve rounds, and then I will scroll down and get. Uh, I guess this is rounds eleven through twenty one ish, and then scroll down and get the rest of the draft. So if you were able to pause it and just want to see the full draft board, it's there for you. Um, but I will be doing a written write-up. Um, written write-up. Of course, it's a written write-up, but written uh, recap of all these drafts that will be in the Roto World Draft Guide with my thoughts on each round in general and then my individual picks. Um, but that's going to do it for this episode a little bit longer than the last two because we went 25 rounds of a mock draft dynasty. Um, I'm exhausted, but in about a few hours, I will be joining Josh Lloyd to debate a few players uh, and where we have them ranked. So that'll be fun, and that will be my sixth podcast episode in four days. So I guess I'm trying my best to see what it's like to be Josh Lloyd and just doing podcast every single day but it's been fun been exhausting but that's going to do it for this one um you can subscribe uh i'm not even actually keep saying that anymore because i haven't done anything with it when i start doing stuff on my sub stack again and sending stuff out then i'll tell you to subscribe to my sub stack but you can follow me on twitter at no ribbon 22 uh follow fantasy basketball international at 
uh, at FBI basketball. I always start saying this and I don't have it written down. So let me just double check that that is the right tag uh, to be able to. Um, it's embarrassing. At FBI basketball. Yes. Okay, cool. I was right. Follow them on Twitter as well. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe. Uh, if you're listening to this, you can like, review, rate this podcast, uh, share with anybody you think would enjoy it that's either looking to get into Dynasty or just needs some extra Dynasty content uh, to brighten their day because a lot of the Dynasty content kind of goes out the windows. We move into redraft season, but uh, I don't know of any other Dynasty mock drafts that have happened um since the dame trade uh so if anybody was waiting to start a dynasty draft until right before the season this would be good content for you but that's gonna do it for this episode so thank you so much for listening you just listened to another episode from the fantasy basketball international podcast network thanks for joining us and for more information about joining our community please check out our website at fbibasketball.com.